Hey guys and welcome to the video. Well, here's a face reveal. Happy to see everyone. Uh, today, I want to go over a little bit more of an in-depth guide on how to run virtual machines on Harvester. I know a lot of you have been asking for that. Um, so, let's just get started. Um, I'm going to be running TrueNAS Scale on Harvester. And it's going to be, I'm going to be running the latest version, so I'll show you how to get that up and running. Before you do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, I have more videos about Harvester coming out, also more videos about Rancher, Kubernetes, and home lab stuff. So make sure you're following for that. All right, let's get started. So if you followed my guide on how to install Harvester, um, you know that this will be the, what you're gonna be greeted with when you first log into your Harvester dashboard. Um, it's just basically an overview of what you have running in your cluster. Um, right now I have a cluster of one machine, uh, one bare metal server. Um, that's my Hive Zeus server that I talk about a lot. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the virtual machines that I'm running. Um, so if we go in here, we can see that I'm running a master Kubernetes uh, virtual machine, two worker Kubernetes virtual machines a true NAS um, virtual machine and then also that rancher front end virtual machine. But today we're going to be focusing on how to run true NAS scale on Harvester. Um, Harvester is a lot like Proxmox. I personally like it a lot better because it seems to just work out of the box a lot easier to set up. Um, I know that some people have questions about obtaining DHCP IP addresses on Harvester, so I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. When you first log into Harvester, you're gonna go over to Networks here, and you're gonna hit Clear to view all default settings and use the default values. And then you're gonna hit Save, and what you're gonna to wanna to do next is you're gonna to wanna to come in here and create a new network, and you can name that whatever you want. I have mine named as DHCP. You can as, uh, assign a VLAN ID to it. I just assigned one. And then you just tell it where the DHCP server IP is. So in my case, it's 10.0.0.1. And then once you do that, um, it's going to create this network right here. As you see, mine says DHCP failed. Um, don't worry about that. As long as you put your correct DHCP server address in there, it will be able to hand out DHCP IP addresses. Um, so let's go ahead and first we want to download TrueNAS Scale. And I should have pointed this out here. There are two versions of TrueNAS. One is TrueNAS Core, the other is TrueNAS Scale. I like TrueNAS Scale because it seems like that's where they're moving in terms of long-term support. And also it runs on Docker and Kubernetes, so it's a pretty awesome product. Um, so we'll hit download TrueNAS Scale. And then I'm just gonna come down here and I'm gonna hit no thank you, I've already signed up. And once we do that, we're greeted with this um, download now button. So you can go ahead and download it. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go into Harvester. We're gonna go to images, click on images, and we're gonna wanna create or upload this uh, TrueNAS scale image. Now, as you can see, I already have 22.0.2.3 in here. Um, I uploaded that five days ago, it's pretty current. So we're just gonna use this image right here for now, but if you were to upload this ISO image, you'd hit create, and then you're gonna hit file and upload file, and it'll ask you where the ISO you want to create uh, upload is. So we're not gonna worry about that for now. Let's go ahead into virtual machines on our Harvester dashboard, and we're gonna click create up in the top right corner. And we'll just give this a second to boot up. All right, and if you, um, one thing I would like to point out is that you can create namespaces for your virtual machines. This is the idea um, of namespaces in Kubernetes, but for virtual machines. It's, it's pretty nifty. You can you know, categorize it by stage, prod, dev, or you can categorize it by you know, home lab or uh, work or stuff like that. I just use the default namespace. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a name True NAS scale. I have uh, 32 cores on the server, so I'm fine with allocating it six CPU cores and six gigs of RAM. I believe what they want you to have is eight gigs of RAM minimum, but it still runs fine with that. Um, another thing that we're going to want to upload is our SSH key. You 
when you're first greeted here, it won't have that default SSH key. That's one that I uploaded, but you can hit create new, paste your public key in there, and you'll be able to use that in the future. I'm just gonna choose the default one for now, which is one that I uploaded and named default. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Um, you're gonna to wanna to add three volumes, and you can add more than three volumes, but minimum we're gonna to wanna to do three volumes. So first we're gonna to want to choose TrueNAS scale as the image, and we're gonna change this to CD-ROM. This is essentially like a uh, removable, bootable USB drive that we're creating, but CD-ROM. Uh, next we're gonna add a volume here, and sometimes there's an issue where it'll change this back to uh, disk, but looks like it's fixed in this version. What I'm gonna name this is I'm gonna name this boot, and this is the volume that we're gonna be installing the boot drive, or we're gonna be installing TrueNAS scale to. And you're gonna to wanna to keep this as disk and change it to SATA. We're gonna add another volume, and that volume is gonna be called data. This will be our first data pool. I'm gonna make this 100 gigabytes, and we're gonna change this keep it as disk and change it to SATA. Now let's go back here for networks. And in order to get an IP address from DHCP, we're gonna change this network from management network to our default DHCP network that we created. It's gonna allocate an, a MAC address later, so you don't need to worry about that. These settings, you can leave them as default. Now if we go to node scheduling, you can, kind of like Kubernetes, you can schedule this virtual machine to be created on a node of your choice. Since I only have one node, I'm not gonna worry about that. If I go to advanced options, we can also see here, there are some other changes that we can make. You could set up your cloud config. You could also set it to rerun on failure or always And the OS type. We can change it. You don't need to change it, but you can if you want to. All right, so let me just double check everything. This looks great. And as you can see up here, you'll also see that you can create multiple instances um, just by a click of a button, it's pretty handy. So let's go ahead and hit create. And we can see that TrueNAS scale is starting right now. Let's just wait for it to boot up. Have a sip of water. After a few minutes, you're going to see this notification right here. Guest VM is not reported as running. Just part of the boot process. Let it hang there for a bit. We can see that it's been scheduled to this node, our harvester node. That's what I named this node. And now we can see it's running. So what we want to do is we want to come in here and hit console and open web VNC going to open a new window that I'm going to pull over here. And here we are at the TrueNAS scale setup menu. So let's go ahead and hit install slash upgrade. Computer has less than the recommended 8 gigs of RAM. I already mentioned that. You should go with 8 gigs if you want to. I'm not going to be keeping this virtual machine, so I don't need to worry about that. And this is going to ask you where you want to install TrueNAS to. Now, like we said before, we made a 10 gig boot um, volume, so we're going to want to install that by hitting space. Do you want to erase all permissions? Yes. Here you create a password. And we just wait for this to finalize. taking a little longer than it usually does. While we're waiting for that to install, I would like to note one thing. If you go into volumes, you're gonna see all the volumes that I've created um, for virtual machines, or in the case um, of TrueNAS Gal, this is the CD-ROM bootable disk that we made of the ISO image. Um, so after we're done with that, we are gonna be able to delete this image right here, or this volume. Um, and yeah, just make sure you delete that volume because it'll save up, you know, 10 gigs of space. 
let's go back to the virtual machine and see if we're done yet. All right, it says the TrueNAS installation succeeded. We're gonna hit enter and we're gonna close out of this console. What we wanna do now is we wanna go back to our TrueNAS Gal uh, virtual machine. We're gonna hit edit um, config right here. And we're gonna wanna eject that CD-ROM volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and then come down here, make sure this is checked. Restart the virtual machine now to take effect of the configuration changes. We're gonna hit yes. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove the CD-ROM or the bootable uh, volume that we made and then it's going to stop the machine and it's going to restart it and since we installed it to the 10 gigabit boot drive volume it should just boot right off of that. Let's give it a second here. We can see that the TrueNAS scale is starting again on the harvester node. We can see it's running. So now we want to grab that IP address that was given to uh, this machine by DHCP. So let's go ahead and open up the console again. I'm going to pull that over here. We should see true NAS scale starting up. And this should take a minute or so. All right, now that we're into TrueNAS, we can see that the IP that was given by the DHCP server is gonna be 10.0.0.112. And then we can see here's the TrueNAS login page. I'm gonna do the password, I'm gonna hit login, and there we are. Now, we wanna take advantage of that volume that we created. So let's go over here to storage and create a new pool. And we can see that 100 gig data volume that we created before. And we'll go ahead and hit create. And just like that, we have our first data pool, which is 100 gigs. Uh, yeah, TrueNAS scale on uh, Harvester is, runs really, really well. As a matter of fact, I use it as my NAS for um, editing videos off of very very solid uh, build um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to delete this virtual machine so we're going to close out of here and all I have to do here is check it right here and we're going to hit delete make sure you delete the volumes as well otherwise there'll be unwanted volumes that you're not doing anything with and if we go into the volumes we can see that these will get deleted in just a moment there we go and the CD-ROM uh, disk that we created before needs to be deleted manually, so we'll go ahead and delete that. And just like that, we spun up a true NAS count server and we spun it down real quick. Um, Harvester is super easy to learn. Not, you really can't mess up anything when it comes to Harvester. I would definitely recommend it if you wanna know how to install Harvester and run a Rancher Kubernetes cluster on Harvester. I would suggest going to look at my video, which should be up at the top corner, I think. But anyway, other than that, that's been it, guys. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, like I said, please leave a like and subscribe. See ya.